Okay, to continue our discussion um, with the sets of numbers, we need an example so we can practice our skills. So we're going to take this set of numbers down here um, in this example here, and we are going to um, look at this example in terms of which numbers are which. Remember that just because a number belongs to one set doesn't mean that it does not belong to any other set. So we're just going to go through this list number by number and decide whether they are members of each of the sets. So our first set that we're going to discuss here is the uh, rational numbers. And so our rational numbers, remember, are any number that can be described as a quotient. So I look at my first number to the left there, negative square root of 12. Well, square root of 12 is not a rational number. It doesn't care if it's positive or negative. It's not rational. I can't describe it by quotients. So the next one is the negative 3. Yes, I can describe a negative 3 with a quotient, and therefore I can say that a negative 3 is a rational number because I can describe it as negative 3 divided by 1 or negative 6 divided by positive 2 or blah blah blah. Now the next one is negative 2 thirds. Yes, that is a quotient of two integers. So negative 2 thirds is a rational number. The next one that I see is 1.1. Now this might not look like a quotient of numbers at first, but if you recall that a decimal comes from dividing one number by another number. So that is actually a mixed number. And then a mixed number we can change to an improper fraction which becomes a quotient of two integers. So 1.1 is again a rational number. And then the next one, pi, well that's one of our irrational numbers. We know pi is irrational, it can't be described as a quotient. And then the next number, the square root of 16. Now because that's got a square root, you may be very tempted to just say, nope, 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 that one's not gonna work. However, the square root of 16 is actually equal to four. And so that is a rational number. And then five is also a rational number. Four and five being very much like negative three. They can be described as a quotient of a lot of different number of numbers. Okay, our next ones are natural numbers we're gonna describe. Um, our natural numbers, I'm gonna start out with exactly the same thing here. I'm going to start from the left and go to the right. Well, natural numbers don't start before we get to the number one. So I'm not going to look at anything that is a negative. So as I go down here, I'm going to take a look at um, I'm going to take a look at my numbers and I go, okay, nothing until I get to positive numbers. So 1.1. Well, 1.1 is not a whole number. It's a fraction, so I can't use that one. Pi? No, pi is a an irrational, so nope, I can't use that one. Square root of 16, we already decided that that was actually 4, so the square root of 16 goes in there. And then 5 also is a whole number, so those are my natural numbers. Now the next one that I'm going to go to is I'm going to go to my integers. So my integers, um, I'm going to start here with and looking the same way. Now integers can be negative, so I'm looking for the positive or negative whole numbers essentially. Well, negative square root of 12? No, definitely not. And then negative 3? Yes, so negative 3 is an integer. Negative 2 and thirds? No, it's not a whole number, so no. 1.1? Again, no. Square root of 16? Yes. If it was a natural number, it is also an integer. So 4 and square root of 16 and 5 are both um, ir integers. Okay, and then finally, we're looking for um, our irrational numbers, our Q's. And there's only um, one negative number that's irrational, and that's our square uh, negative square root of 12. That's an irrational number. And then we've mentioned it over and over again that pi is also. And so that gives us our set, our numbers and a description of why each is what it is. And so that will wrap up our um, our time here. All right.